Hello, I'm Dr. Qureshi. Of all the anorectal disease you will see in clinic, probably the most common will be hemorrhoid disease. Hemorrhoid disease is extremely common, with about 50% of 50-year-olds in America having some sort of symptom from hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids are just enlarged vascular cushions in the anal canal. They're made up of connective tissue and arteriovenous communications. In most people, hemorrhoids are found in the left lateral position, the right anterior, and the right posterior. The etiology of hemorrhoids includes chronic straining from heavy lifting or constipation, prolonged lavatory sitting and straining. Uh, hemorrhoids are also quite common in pregnancy, in ascites, liver cirrhosis, and it is not uncommon for hemorrhoid patients to have significant family history of hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids are classified into internal or external hemorrhoids depending on whether they arise from above the dentate line or below it. Hemorrhoids that arise above the dentate line are internal hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids that arise below the dentate line are external hemorrhoids. Another classification divides hemorrhoid presentation into four categories. First degree hemorrhoids cause only bleeding. Uh, second degree hemorrhoids cause some prolapse that spontaneously reduces. Third degree hemorrhoids are hemorrhoids that have to be reduced manually. And fourth degree hemorrhoids are hemorrhoids that cannot be reduced manually. On inspection, here you see external hemorrhoids. They are soft to the touch and therefore not thrombosed. Following this, a careful digital rectal exam is performed to exclude anal fissure or masses. Next, a lubricated slotted anoscope is carefully inserted into the rectum and here we will see the right posterior hemorrhoid at about 10 o'clock. And next, the anoscope will be gently rotated to the 2 o'clock position to reveal the right anterior hemorrhoid. Next, the anoscope is gently rotated to reveal the left lateral hemorrhoid at 6 o'clock. As you gently withdraw the scope, you can see the dentate line. This is a photograph showing a prolapsed internal hemorrhoid and surrounding external hemorrhoids. Here you see a thrombosed external hemorrhoid. These are very tense and very tender. Here is an anal cancer that could easily be missed. This is an anal fissure that can be seen on separation of the buttocks and it's usually quite tender. It is important to differentiate internal from external hemorrhoids on retroflexion. In this picture, the red line surrounds the external hemorrhoids. And so one must band proximal to the red line. It's important also to remember to suction air out of the rectum so that the hemorrhoids become more obvious. Otherwise, you might not see them. Infrared photocoagulation focuses energy from a tungsten halogen lamp to the probe, which must be in contact with the hemorrhoid to have its coagulation effect. And it can be dialed up uh, to uh, between 0.5 and 2 second pulses of energy. And multiple hemorrhoids can be treated with this. Uh, one of the things is that the depth of injury is about 2.5 millimeters, so you're not likely to uh, cause any serious damage. 
This is the Oregon banding device. It has an over tube and a syringe like device that suctions the internal hemorrhoid into the syringe. And then uh, the band, which is preloaded at the tip of this syringe, is then released by pulling the syringe back while holding the over tube in place. So, very simple to do and very quick. This patient has had an anoscopy and is now having rubber band ligation of the internal hemorrhoids. Here you can see the device is inserted and then withdrawn so that the ridge is felt by the left index finger, which tells us that the band is about two centimeters above the dentate line. Next, with repeated suction with the plunger, the hemorrhoid is pulled into the syringe device and locked. By twisting it from side to side, you release any possible muscularis layer trapped within the band. And now by slowly pulling on the syringe plunger, the band will get released. Here is a second case of a patient undergoing internal hemorrhoid banding. Here the syringe device is carefully inserted into the rectum and is positioned determined by feeling the ridge on the over tube with the right index finger to make sure that you're clearly above the dentate line. Now with gradual and repeated pulling on the plunger, the hemorrhoid is sucked into the syringe and then locked. Now with careful twisting right to left, one makes sure that the muscularis layer is not trapped within the hemorrhoid and then the syringe is slowly pulled out with the over tube left in place to deploy the band. It is important afterwards to perform a digital rectal exam to make sure that the band is optimally placed. Soon after the internal hemorrhoid is banded, it becomes rapidly ischemic and in a few days, the tissue sloughs off. This results in fibrosis, causing the mucosa to tack to the side of the pelvic wall at the same time preventing prolapse and blood going down into the hemorrhoids, causing them to shrink. Enoscopy is easy and crucial when you are evaluating anorectal disease. Treatment of hemorrhoids is safe and effective in the office setting. I hope presentations like this are raising awareness that most hemorrhoids can be managed safely in the office and without the need for surgery. Thank you.